Finally, I end this episode on a short one. It's Kamiko. This was the first game I downloaded on the Switch's eShop. I had Breath of the Wild at launch, and then later Ultra Street Fighter 2, but that was it. When I started recording the original 30-something games in these bonus episodes, it wasn't even eligible for not being a year old at the time. I only took so long recording that it did pass my cutoff. We have three Shrine Maidens to play as. I'll just cycle between them each level, starting with Yamato. The girl you choose is summoned to the Land of the Dead by God. The gates connected in this world from the Living World have been sealed by demons. If something isn't done, they will overrun the Living World. Each character is then given their own Imperial Regalia, Yamato's being the Blade of Kusanagi, so they can become the Kamiko who will defeat the demons and release the seal. I get beamed down into the first level, the Forest of the Awakening. The game's in a top-down view and I can both dash and attack, starting with these demons that look like Woobats from Pokemon. Yamato is the basic beginner character, just getting in up close and swinging with a sword. It may be a boring choice to be my favourite, but she is the one I enjoy playing as the most. While fighting, I press a switch to lower the door going up. I leave and go left, taking out these mushrooms. After the hell I had with mushrooms earlier this episode, wiping them out like that is so satisfying. Going down we have some hornets and I follow the path around to the shrine where I pay 100 of my 200 points to release one of this level's four seals. The points are refilled by killing enemies, it's the blue mist that comes out of them. I cut through the grass behind the shrine to find a switch that lowers this pole back the way I came. On my way back to it I open a chest I pass earlier by paying 50 points. It gives me a key that I carry through the path I opened and use it to unlock the door at the end. I then cut through some more grass, including enemies disguised as grass, to reach the second shrine and undo that seal. On the way back I go through this hole in the trees and follow the hidden path to another chest. Inside is a blue cube that adds 25 to my maximum for points. The same path can also lead to a chest containing this blue orb. Getting here will make me drop it and have to return to the chest to pick it up again. I take the orb back to the centre, above the room I started in, and place it in one of these slots. I then head right to find a chest I can't reach with two switches. I push this block over to the first and stand on the second to make a bridge to the chest containing an orb. I leave you where it is for now and go down, over the raising and lowering spikes, and over to the third shrine to remove the seal. To recover health I need to cut up these red jewels from the grass. I take the orb back to the middle and put it in the other slot to open the door behind them. I go up and find the four representations of the seal. In this stone pillar to the left I find some sushi. It's a hidden collectible that refills my health and points. There's one of these in every level. When killing enemies you'll see I have a combo going on. The higher the combo the more points I gain back when I kill one. I go through the top right, around the corner and through the trees on the left to find a health increase in a chest. I then go down and unseal the final shrine. This opens up a teleporter. Next to the shrine is a switch to open a shortcut back. I then get on the teleporter. The new area it takes me to has another point and health expansion that I can have for free. Then through the door is the boss. It's this orb, but a box with hands drops down and the orb hides inside it. It spawns in mushrooms and fires projectiles at me. There are four switches around here, I have to stand on one and when the boss gets moving, get out of the way so it lands on the switch. Once it has pressed all four, it fires a series of balls out of its top, one of which is the orb for me to get some hits in. The cycle repeats but the boss moves a little faster. For the third cycle it fires two much longer streams of projectiles and moves even faster. It still goes the same and I kill it. I'm then given my clear time for the stage, which will be a little important at the end. For the second level, the Sunken Relics, I'll be playing as Uzume, whose Imperial Regalia is the Magatama of Yasakani. She fights with a bow and uses the Magatama as an arrowhead. Unlike Yamato who can move forward while attacking, Uzume stops in her tracks. This simple thing, combined with her being more long ranged, makes her my least favourite of the three to play as. She's still fun though, just not as much as the other two. When you start, there are four branching paths. I take the right path first, which leads down a bit, passing some cube demons. I press a switch to activate a teleporter. I go inside the building on the right for a hidden chest with a health increase. I then return to the start and take the left path. I fight my way down and around to the right to find the first shrine. Right some more is a switch that lowers a pillar blocking the bridge next to it. Also here is an orb in a chest. The bridge goes up, back to the beginning. I take the orb back right and through the teleporter. It puts me into the building I found the health expansion and I can place the orb in a slot here. It opens a path going up from the beginning. Taking that path takes me up to the currently inactive boss teleporter. From there I go left, down, left, down and open a cube for a point expansion. I backtrack up and right and go right again and then down to press a switch which lowers another pillar further on. I backtrack up, left and up again. We now have these little goo enemies. The pillar I lowered now allows me to reach a second shrine to unseal it. To the left of the shrine is a lever that creates a bridge and a timer across the water. I run right across, take out the enemies, including a bubble spitting lizard, and open the chest here for a key. I carry it down into a switch that activates a teleporter. Said teleporter takes me back to the top of the building I placed that orb. I use the other teleporter to return to the section right of the starting point. A little down I can use the key to unlock a door. In the right pillar of this door is the level's collectible, a cheeseburger. Behind the door is the third shrine. You may notice that the shrines each tend to be in each of the four corners of the level. Not exactly in the corners, but around those areas. I backtrack through the teleporters and cross this bridge going right. I then go down quite a bit and after clearing out the enemies, I push this block behind the tree left and then up onto a switch. 
I then stand on the other to make a third switch appear. This one creates another teleporter. From where it takes me, I go up to the final shrine, unseal it and activate the boss teleporter, which I then use. I pick up my two expansions and take on the boss. This time, the orb goes inside this bigger ball thing that spawns in the cube enemies. As it moves, it reveals itself to be a chain of balls with the orb I'm after inside one of them. A couple hits break the chain and it stops to reform and start again, but with the orb in a different segment. Sometimes that segment will move independently of the others and I'd have to use the two teleporters on each side of the arena to avoid being boxed in. I simply have to do the cycle three times to defeat it. For the third level, the Scorching Labyrinth, I'll show my Hinome playthrough. Her Imperial Regalia is the Mirror of Yatta. She fights with a sword and the mirror as a shield. She'll first throw the shield and then as it travels back to her she will use the sword until she catches her shield back. I enjoy playing as her more than Uzume, but not as much as Yamato. To the left from the start is the locked door, so I go right. To the right and up is blocked by a pillar, so I go down. I actually get a death from these guys who look like Sova from Metroid. Next time I keep heading down and then left across this bridge to a door that needs 50 points to open. Then I go through this wall for a chest with a point expansion. Back through the wall and keep going left and down. There's this one enemy that teleports but dies just as quickly as the rest. I go up across the bridge where a gate closes behind me and I have to take on a group of the silver likes to continue. I also show off a charge attack by holding down the attack button. It uses up points but it covers a huge area. I go through the newly opened gate and open a chest for an orb. To the left is a pair of slots and I put it in one. Up from there I open a door to find a lever that creates a timed bridge to a chest containing another health expansion. The switch here activates a teleporter that puts me back before the gated section I now have to repeat. From the exit I go up into another with another enemy that doesn't get to do much before I kill it. Through the exit I follow the path right to unlock another door. In the wall to the right of the door is this level's collectible, a chicken. Behind the door is a chest containing a key. I have to drop it for now which puts it back in the chest. I first have to break all the rocks around this switch that lowers a pillar just below. I can now take the key through there and unlock the door to the first shrine. I leave the way I came and let the switch go up, crossing this bridge with fireball spitting statues to the second shrine. That's the right side done. I return to the boss teleporter and run past it and to the left. Here I have a simple sliding block puzzle to push a block onto a switch so I can stand on the other to lower a pillar and undo the seal on the third shrine. From there it's down to open a chest with an orb, but first I cut grass to reach this switch to lower a pillar. I then take the orb through and it's brought me back to those slots familiar. I place the orb to open the door going down. That path leads down to the final shrine. Now I can take on the boss. Two more expansions before I start the fight. This time the orb hides inside this diamond-ish thing. It opens up to drop out the server likes and creates a line of projectiles that home in on me. After a few times opening up, the orb drops out giving me the chance to hit it. After the first cycle, a second one appears. After the enemy spawning, this time the second will swing around the arena while tethered to the original. Also it's random which of them the orb will drop out of, so be prepared. And of course, at the third cycle, a third one appears. This time all three will move while also repeating their homing projectile from the first cycle. Using the charge attack will keep you invincible during the animation, and then get killed before the very last hit goes in. I get it next time though. Back to Yamato for the final level, the ruins of Yamatai Koku. This is the longest level by far. I start by going up and then left. We start getting little eyeball blobs with headbands and these walking masks. I go down and press a switch to activate a teleporter left at the starting point. Then down the stairs and to the left I can go up to find a chest I can't get to. I return to the previous section and press this switch to remove the barrier blocking me from the chest. The chest contains an orb to take back to the section just up from the start. It's a pain thanks to the enemies it spawns in blocking my path forward since I can't attack without dropping the orb. After it's placed, I press that switch again so I can go up from there. Continuing up past some spikes I get blocked by a door. So I return to the start and use that teleporter. It takes me to a chest with the key that opens that door. First time having any spawning right on top of me and make me drop it. Prick. I get it in next time and go through it to unseal the first shrine. I return to the area above the start and go right instead. There's a machine turned on and off by physical attacks. This one makes me a bridge to a chest next to it containing a point expansion. I really wish I remember what this meter was called, but I'm drawing a blank and I'm sounding so simple. From there I go down and get gated in with a load of enemies who get wiped out in seconds. I keep going down and press a switch to create a bridge back to the level start. Nearby is a chest containing a second orb. I place it in the other slot. It opens a the door there, but first I return to the switch next to the chest and turn it on to remove a barrier in the gated room with the enemies. I go through it and all the way at the other end is a second shrine. This is the only level that disobeys that corner trend I mentioned last level. This time they're all lined up at the back. I go through the door I open with the orbs and reach the boss teleporter. I go left and down to press a switch to activate another teleporter, then go up to open a door. Behind said door is the third shrine. The teleporter is back to the left of the section with the orbs. It takes me to a lever that opens up a wall from the boss teleporter. I'm on a timer so I have to get through quick. As soon as I get through, it's another seconds long enemy rush. In the third pillar from the left is the final collectible, a child. Are they saying you eat the child for a health refill? To the left of that arena is four of those vending machine looking switches. 
turning all four on at once can be a little tricky thanks to the size of your hitbox. It makes a bridge appear leading to a chest with another health expansion. Then the right exit from the arena going down takes me to a door leading to the final shrine in the game. I go into the teleporter, pick up the final two expansions. That gets me to a total of 400 points and 12 units of health maximum. I then go up to confront the final boss. This one actually talks, just asking the shrine maiden why they follow God and believe in him. It doesn't get an answer, but only because none of them can speak. He starts by firing many projectiles out of the orb. After that, a slow bigger one comes towards me. I have to hit it to send it back to the boss to damage it. After three hits, it will create a line of squares that come towards me for a bit, shooting diamonds up from the ground. The big projectile will also come out faster and have the diamonds pop out of the ground around me, then followed by doing it in lines. Three more hits and it will start firing lasers everywhere while also sending out a ring of fireballs. Three more hits defeats it, but that was only the first phase. Now it's this huge giant thing with four eyes. He has a barrier in front of its weak point and starts off by firing projectiles across the screen. The barrier can only be dealt with using a charge attack. He gets rid of the barrier and hits the weak point. It follows this up by trying to crush me under a palace drop of the first boss. While doing that, I have to keep killing the enemies spawning in to refill my points, since a charge attack uses up 150 of them. After I get the next hit in, it has a palace drop of the second boss fly around trying to ram me. Third hit. Then it goes in the third boss and repeatedly tries to crush me under them. The barrier returns, but I have only 7 points, so I need to keep my combo up while avoiding damage. But I get that hit in. Now it tries a giant laser that slowly fills up the screen except for the very edges of the platform. Then by having blades shoot up from the bottom of the screen. He then follows that up with flamethrowers. Then it's crushers that hit all but the centre of the arena. Then the barrier goes up for the final time. The demon compliments my performance before musing that they may have just been pawns in a bigger game by higher beings. It then explodes many times. I climb one final stairway to one last shrine that removes the seal for good. God thanks the shrine maiden, saying the heavens and earth are connected once again. He says that the sounds of those who are saved singing the maiden's praises can be heard all over. We then get to see all the levels, populated by people living their lives as normal again. The maiden is allowed to keep their imperial regalia for now as they travel the world and discover new things, and the gods promise to continue watching over the world. After the credits, I'm given my clear time. Your save file indicates which of the three characters you beat in the game with. It also awards you a crown by that character based on your clear time. I did well enough with each character that all three have gold crowns. The records also keep track of which collectibles I've picked up. That menu also gives a small bit of backstory on each character. Kamiko is a really fun game. There aren't many games I like to replay many times at once, but when I first downloaded this game, I did that. It's fast enough with satisfying combat and just the perfect length to keep you from getting bored. Really nice soundtrack too. I'd recommend this one. It's cheap, so you wouldn't lose much if you don't like it. At the time I recorded this game, it was exclusive to Switch, but in the three years since, it's also come out on PC and PS4.